2 Timothy chapter number 2. This is one of the great books, First and Second Timothy, powerful parts of the Word of God. Paul wrote before they cut his head off, uh, giving Timothy his instructions as his son in the faith. And this morning, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, look at verse number 20, and I want you to keep your Bibles open there for the introduction, and then you can close them, okay? 2 Timothy 2.20, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, the ones that are dishonorable, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. You can underline that little word, use, and prepared unto every good work. Now, that verse said that a man like me and you, woman, boy, girl, would give ourselves sanctified for the master's use. So the master would use us. Hey, keep your Bible open there just a minute. I want to preach this morning on the subject, the kind of person God will use the kind of person God will use. Being used by God may be something some of you don't even think about, but to me, the greatest honor and privilege a man can have on this earth is to think that the creator of the universe used you Amen. to help somebody else. If there's a better honor than that, please tell me about it. It's better than a Grammy or an Emmy, some little stupid thing like that, and you, you'll throw it away, it'll get burnt up in a fire. I mean, it, just to think that God Almighty used you, that's a tremendous privilege, y'all. So how the kind of person, we're going to talk this morning about the kind of person God will use. Now, by, by way of introduction, the Apostle Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, gave five names for Christians in 2 Timothy 2. Look at it. In chapter, in chapter 2 and verse 1, you're called a son. So we're, there's sonship. In uh, verse number three, you are called a soldier. So we're, we're in a war. We fight. In verse number 12, we're called a sufferer. If we suffer with it in this world, you're already seeing some fall off the wagon there. We suffer with the Lord. We'll reign with him. In, in verse number 15, we're a student. Look at it. We study a student rightly dividing the word of truth. And in chapter uh, 2, verse 24, we are a servant. It's getting thinner as we begin to read those things off that we are for the Lord. So all of these things are prerequisites and requirements that God would use you. Ever since I've been saved and I found out God would use a person, it's been my desire that God would use me. And the few times that I, that I felt like he has was honestly the greatest thrill of my life besides getting saved uh, at, at myself. So I want to talk to you this morning about the kind of person that God will use. You only got one life, and it's going fast. The reality is people say, well, well, they're old and they're young and stuff. The truth is some of us just started before you did. We're all moving at the same pace, same speed. 24 hours a day, we're all moving. And life will be over soon. A short life, if, if you live to be 100 years old, it goes by really quick. Somebody's talking about getting 30 the other day, and they said, boy, time sure is flying. You ain't seen nothing yet. Your life, you wait till you, you hit 40. You wait till you hit 50. I mean, zoom, it's gone. So let's, let's ask God to use us. Uh, I want to give you a few things. Uh, three or four or five things this morning, and, and we'll be gone. Number one, God will use a walking. You need to be a walking person. Now, what in the, in the world is a walking person? A person that walks with God. I mean, if you want God to use you, you gotta walk with him. Who's the example in the Bible? Enoch in Hebrews 11, 5, in Genesis 5, 24. The Bible said Enoch walked with God. Now, I know some of you, you walk with somebody. You run around with somebody. If you go to school, you hang out with certain people. If you work, there's certain people you go places with, you do stuff. You walk with somebody. 
I can't think of any greater honor than to walk with God. Get up in the morning and say, Lord, I want to walk with you. What kind of walk is that? Well, it is a friendly walk. You know, we often quote uh, uh, that verse, uh, Proverbs 18, 24, that said that a man who hath friends must show himself friendly. We quote that a lot. And, and we're always quoted as us being friendly to each other. But that's not just us. That can be the Lord. Abraham was the friend of God. And so you be a friend of God. There's an old song in the book that says, I'll be a friend to Jesus. My life for him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end. Now, the only way you're going to walk with God is agree with him. The Bible said, can two walk together unless they be agreed? You take two people. If they disagree on stuff, they're not going to walk together long. Most of the people you walk with, you mostly agree with. Not on everything, but you on the main things you agree with. That's why people are divided up into little groups and sects all over this world is because people, birds of a feather, flock together. And I want to be one that walks with God. And the only way that you can walk with God is to agree with God. You cannot say, well, the Bible is a good moral book, but I think in certain places... Uh, in our day and time, it's not relevant. You can't walk with God, say that. You can't walk with God and disagree with Him. I want to say something to you about this Bible this morning. The Bible is timeless. That means it's, well, you say, well, that was for them people back there. No, 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 no. The Bible is timeless. It's past, present, and future. This book is completely and totally relevant to the day you and I are living in. You got a lot of people running around today saying, well, uh, you know, what was good and right for them back in that day, it worked for them, but we're living in a different day and we have evolved to figure out, no, 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 no. Listen, if, if God said, get married before you live together back then, you're still supposed to get married before you live together now. You cannot disagree with God and walk with God. You cannot disagree with God on life. You can't say, well, situation ethics say uh, in certain situations, it's all right to lie if it's for the greater good. That, you know, the Lord doesn't walk off and left you. Uh, he didn't say that. Uh, you can't say, uh, well, the Bible's a good book, but I, I still believe that we evolved from tadpoles and we work and uh, it's all evolution is true. No, 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 no. Uh, listen, people, uh, the Bible does not teach evolution. It does not teach it. And a man said, well, men wrote the Bible. Well, men wrote them science books too. And I'm gonna tell you something. There is no evidence that there's ever been a mistake found in this book. The mistake's in their head. And if they prove it, they're wrong. Uh, they let God be true and every man a liar. They're proof and real proof. You can't say, uh, well, I know the Bible says a lot about my lifestyle, but I was born this way. Nope, can't walk with God. You cannot walk with God and say, I'm going against God. You cannot walk with God and say, well, uh, I don't get drunk too often. You cannot walk with God and smoke pot and drink beer and get high and party and go, you can't do it. And that knocks some people off the wagon right there. I'm telling you this morning, you want God to use you? Learn to walk with it. Straighten up, buddy. Amen. Get your heart right. Amen. You can't say, well, as long as we're in love, it's okay. You can't walk with God. Uh, you see now already, and I'm just getting started, why so many people don't are not interested in walking with God. He contradicts their lifestyle. And I'm telling you, the happiest you'll ever be in your life is in when you surrender what you're doing wrong and say, God, I'll live right. And that's when you're really happy. Amen. All right, and all of that, it's a faithful walk. You know what? You know, if you want to walk with God, it's a faithful walk. Faithful means this. You know what faithful means? Like a man being faithful to his wife, like a wife being faithful. You want, you want them to be faithful when you're not around. You want them to be faithful when nobody else is looking. You want them to be faithful. Isn't that right, ladies? Isn't that what you want your husband to do? Isn't that right, men? You, you say, well, I'm, I'm faithful as long as you're looking. Well, that ain't faithful. 
I mean, who wants a jerk like that? I let you say, listen, uh, you, I can trust you when you're down yard at work. I can trust you when you're out there in the mall. I can trust you uh, when you're out. I'm telling you, it is a faithful walk, ladies and gentlemen. It is a faithful walk. You know, a man trusts his wife. He said, uh, you don't flirt at work, right? You don't flirt with the other guy. We don't flirt with the other women. You know, we got too many Christians. They, they look pretty good on Sunday morning. Act pretty good on Sunday morning, but during the week, you cannot tell them from the same crowd that they work with. I'm telling you this morning, if you want God to use you, you are going to have to have a faithful walk. That means when nobody's looking and you got your phone and something pops up that's not right and you know it's not right, you don't click on it. You just move it out of the way. Can I hear? A, can I get a witness out there? That's right. You say, Brother Danny, there's nothing. Yes, they are, and you know they are. Something wrong with that. You're not supposed to look when something bad comes on TV. or That's when you hit the channel changer and change it immediately. If you want God to use you, you got to have a faithful walk. That's right. That's right, you gotta have a faithful walk. That means you don't laugh when they cuss on, at work. That means uh, uh, when uh, on songs on the radio, you listen to gut stuff that glorifies God. It is a faithful walk. Not only that, it's a fruitful walk. A fruitful walk. Did you know if you walk with God, God will use you and you'll bring forth fruit? I've, Lord in mercy, I've had it happen a few times and it is such a blessing, such a blessing. I was in Florida a few weeks ago preaching Brother Wayne was down there, and uh, this church, this church uh, would start service every night, and there was a young man would get up and lead the singing. He was probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe 30, early 30s, something like that. He'd stand up there and lead that singing, and I noticed, I said, that boy, he, he's got the touch of God on him. He, he's so spiritual acting. He acted like he loved the I mean, he'd fire that crowd up. Just a young man, I said, hey, man, I had no idea. You know what he came to me and told me? After about the second night, he said, Brother Danny, I just want to tell you something. He said, you know where I got saved? I got saved at the youth rally in Burke County in 2011. You know what? I like to have a shouting spell. I said, glory to God. God used us. God used us. People, people, are y'all listening to me? That's why we fast. That's why we pray. That's why we try to be faithful. The Lord used our, you know, people get this attitude of, oh, all them little kids go up there at that altar and, and it's all emotions and you can't find them the next week. That may be true of some of them, but it ain't true of all of them. But these people serving God in other churches today that got saved at the youth rally. I'm telling you, God used it. God used it. God used it. Once in a while, I have somebody come up to me. It happened the other night in revival when I was preaching down yonder somewhere the other night. Uh, I had two people come up to me, and they said, Brother Danny, I want you to know that sermon opened my eyes. And I believe, you may disagree with me. I, I can't prove it. I believe many, many years ago, God called me. That was part of my calling to open people's eyes and turn them from Satan to God. That verse that he gave Paul, Lord gave me that verse in a special way many years ago and it's happened on a regular basis ever since then. People will come up and say, that really opened my eyes. And every time they say it, I, something turns a flip inside me. I say, glory to God, hallelujah. Maybe the Lord used me. Maybe the Lord used me. One time I had this old boy with me and, uh, and, and uh, I'd led him to the Lord, led him to the Lord's flea market. And he lived down here somewhere in Morganton. And I, I, his name was Buddy. And I said, Buddy, you get in church. You read the Bible. You pray. You do right. And uh, I said, the Lord will bless you. So about two weeks later, I called him. And I said, Buddy, how you doing? He said, pretty good. And I said, uh, you want to meet me? We'll eat a hamburger or something. And uh, I, he said, yeah, I met at that little... Uh, a little tasty free, it used to be tasty freeze over yonder on Carbon City Road. And we met there and we were sitting in there. I'll never forget, it was, it, was, uh, it was sort of windy weather, something like that, bad weather. And uh, we were sitting there talking and he's sitting there and I was sitting here. I said, buddy, the Lord can use you. You witnessed your friends. You witnessed your family. I said, the Lord, they ain't no telling. I said, you don't know. One of these days, somebody liable to just walk up to you out of clear blue and say, because you witnessed to me, I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. You don't never know how God used my hand to heaven. As soon as I said that, 
a guy walked up. He punched me on the shoulder. He said, ain't you a preacher? I said, maybe. No, I, didn't. No, no. I said, uh, why you want to know? No. I said, yes, I am. He said, do you remember me? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, one night, I think he said like two years ago, he said, you was driving a little old red boat, and I had a little red Volkswagen at that time, a little beat, old bug, the old body style, the old ones. My sunroof, you cranked it with your hand like that right there. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and I, he said, you coming down the road, and me and somebody, it was pouring the rain, and I was hitchhiking, and you picked me up, and you talked to me about God. I said, is that right? And he said, I want you to know, I went to church. And I want you to know, I got my life right with God. And Buddy's eyes got about that. He went. And honest to goodness, I, I wanted to shout, but I didn't want him to think like that was the first time that's ever happened. Plus, see that? Happens all the time, man. Uh, the Lord will use you. Really, I want to go, Wow, hallelujah. I did get somebody saved. But you know what, people? The, that's the greatest feeling on earth to think, God used me. God used me. And all you got to do to get God to use you is surrender to him. You don't have to have talent. I've heard people come to me and say, oh, but Danny, you, can, you, you got this memory and you don't never forget nothing and you can do that. It ain't got nothing to do with it. It ain't got nothing to do with talent. It ain't got nothing to do with money. It ain't got nothing to do with looks. It ain't got nothing to do with uh, ability. God wants you to be available, just available. If you got money and good looks and talent and all that, that's a hindrance to you. That's usually a hindrance to somebody. Listen, brother, get your act together. Get your life right with God. Surrender to all to him, him, and he'll bless you for it. He'll use you. He'll use you. I guarantee you. How many of y'all seen... How many of y'all seen her signed over yonder beside Cracker Barrel on the hill? Raise your hand up. Man, if you miss that, you don't need your driver's license. Uh, I mean, coming this way from Marion this way, right in the forward place over there, yard, people say, Brother Danny, is that our sign? Is that our sign? And really, it's not, but it's my friend's. And uh, uh, my friend of mine, he saw our sign, and he's a, he was a businessman. He said, I want to I wanna be a witness, and bought that one over there. And they, they say over 2 million people a year will see that thing. And it says, Jesus is the answer to all your problems. And, I mean, there's celebrities coming down that highway. I mean, there's drug addicts go by there every day. We don't know. We don't know. We won't know till we get to heaven how many have looked up and said, Jesus is the answer, and wound up in Charlotte at a church the next Sunday morning or in Winston-Salem, or Raleigh, or Wilmington, just headed that way. And brother, you know what? Uh, and I told him, I said, man, why didn't you put shining light on there? If it's that close to her. I said, I'll give you some money if you put it on there next time. He said he would. Uh, but I, I just said, Jesus answered all your problems. And I'm telling you this morning, God used our sign to witness to millions of people. 56,000 cars a day go by here. Now you tell me God can't use you. You tell me the Lord can't use a youth rally flyer or a track. Yes, he can. Number two, I'm going to have to hurry because we won't have a tonight service. We'll, this one will last till tonight. Uh, all right, number two, not only a walking person, God will use a worshiping person. God will use a worshiping person. Now, I didn't say just when you feel like it. A minute ago, I felt like it. I wanted to turn, do it down there and turn a flip. But I'm going to tell you, you're supposed to worship God not just when you feel chill bumps or you have back you. You ought to worship God every day of your life because you're saved and going to heaven when you die. Every day of your life. Now, there's three, three, you know how you ought to worship? Number one, you ought to worship scripturally. You ought to worship scripturally. As a matter of fact, the only worship God accepts is scriptural worship. Unscriptural worship is, is waste of time. You say, well, Brother Danny, what is scripture? Get your scripture and find out how they worship God. You know what Jesus said in John 4, 24? He said, God is a spirit, capital S. He is a particular spirit. The new Bibles are wrong. They say God is spirit. That's not true. There's a lot of stuff in spirit that's not God. God is a particular spirit. There's only one Holy Spirit and there's a bunch of false spirits. So God is a spirit and they, listen to me, they that worship him, 
First Baptist, Second Baptist, Third Baptist, Fourth Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God, Pentecostal, Holy Ghost, Jesus name, tongue, talking, snake handling, whatever. You name it. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship God without his spirit and you cannot worship God without the truth. That eliminates a lot of stuff that goes on in the name of religion this morning. You, you say, well, what's the Spirit? In the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will never lead you to do anything contrary to the truth. When he'll bear witness to the truth. He leads you to the truth. So you'll worship scripturally. There's no other way. Now, in the Bible, let me, I ain't got time to get into a big lesson about worship. In the Bible, they raise their hands all the way through the Bible. In the Bible, they shouted. So that's scriptural worship. In the Bible, they said amen. Not just a few fanatics on the front row. The whole congregation, when they, Moses would read it, would say amen. That means every one of you. Let's practice. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. Now, that's a, get in a habit of that. Some of y'all just sit there the whole time like you're hazing or something. I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, you're like that guy on crystal meth I talked to yesterday or, or some, and, and he was doing like this. And, and you know, y'all pray for that poor guy. Uh, but anyway, uh, listen, it, it, they worship God, and you know what they did? They worship God with their faces to the ground. It is scriptural to fall on your face before God. It is scriptural to raise your hand. It is scriptural to say, praise God. It is scriptural. People say, well, people have different ways of worship. That's exactly right. But the only way you can worship God right is in spirit and in truth. And they hollered amen. They raised their hands. They shouted. And the noise of the shout was heard afar off when they worship God. Amen. You want to see, listen, people. Uh, if, if, if I walked up to you, the definition of worship is an intense love or admiration for it. If you want to see a definition of worship, look at one of them college basketball games. That's worship. Intense love and admiration for. Ah, we're number one. We have one. They love to put the camera on me. Hey, hey, mama, we're number one. That's worship. That's what that is. Intense love. Look it up in the dictionary. Worship don't mean you put on a tie and come and sit in a building on Sunday morning and can't wait till it's over and sleep the whole time and want to go play golf that evening. That ain't worship. Worship is an intense love. And I, Look, if you knocked on my door tomorrow morning and said, Brother Danny, the Lord's laid on my heart. You got a car out there 220,000 miles, that one sitting out there 230,000 hers. The Lord's laid on my heart to buy you a brand new car. Hint, hint. If the Lord, if you knocked on my door, I'm kidding, and said, Brother Danny, God has laid it on my heart to buy you a brand new car. Do you honestly think that I'd say, I appreciate that. <laughs> mm, uh-uh. I'd say, first, are you, are you lying? The April Fool's done passed. I won't be the biggest fool at last. And now you'll say, no, I really am. I go, woo, yes, that's what I do. If somebody knocked on your door and said, you, did you hear about that guy in Nebo that won a bunch, like millions of dollars, won a lottery or something like that? Hey, if somebody knocked on your door and said, you've won the Reader's Digest sweepstakes, I don't even know if they even have that stuff anymore. Uh, Mom used to get that stuff in the mail every week. And, uh, and you've won the sweepstakes and, and we're gonna give you $10 million. Do you, you honestly, would you say, Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Lord, you ain't going to do uh, Listen, if they knocked on my door and said you won $10 million, I'd go, yes, sir. Woo! Hallelujah. That's exactly what I do in church. I'm worshiping. If somebody knocked on my door and gave me $10 million, I wouldn't do like this. And I'm not trying to be ugly. But you don't do that. You see, we scored a touchdown. Ooh. That's, that's not normal. You, don't get mad. You've got to learn how to worship God scripturally. And nobody in the Bible fell on their back when they worshiped God. Nobody in, their, in the Bible fell that they all fell on their face. 
you don't do your hands like this. You don't like that. You see anybody at the ball game going, go, go team. It's like this, yes, like that. Now the same thing applies. It is a scriptural worship. Not only that, it's a sacrificial worship. It's a sacrificial work of worship. You know what? Real worship will cost you something. Abraham, when he worshiped God back there in Genesis 22, 5, you know what he had to do? He had to be willing to sacrifice his son. Now, the Lord rescued him at the last second, but Abraham had every intention of sacrificing that boy to the Lord. He sure did. You mamas here this morning, you, you, you want to you worship God? Be willing to pay a price. Be willing to sacrifice. We, we don't... We don't advertise out there, come to our worship experience Sunday morning. It's not a worship experience. It is biblical, scriptural, sacrificial worship. That's why we, we give up food on our fasting day. We don't eat. That's why we uh, uh, go the extra mile and help people. We are so blessed. It's sacrificial. Not only that, it's submissive. It's submissive uh, worship. Submissive. In Second Chronicles 7, 1 to 3, Bible said they bowed. They said, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. Maybe you know a person in here or not in here that you just don't like and you've got hard feelings toward and you just can't stand them. You hope they die and everything. Part of worship may be you submit to God and get rid of them hard feelings and get rid of it and don't have hate in your heart. All of that is included in a worshiping person. You can't worship worship God and hate people. You can't worship God and hate other people. Y'all, you can't do it. It's impossible. Real worship is submissive worship. Uh, I heard this story the other day, and I'm telling you, it got a hold of my heart. I was driving. I can tell you where I was at. It got a hold of me so hard. Right over there, going to McDonald's over there next to, on Carbon City Road, going out that other way. And there's a guy on the radio, and he said, this missionary was going to the mission field, and this man loved God. And I admire anybody that's willing to give up everything here in America and go to another country like that. I do. And uh, he said this guy, he was going to the mission field, and he said uh, they, uh, a, a man that was pretty well off handed him a sealed envelope. And he said, here, you take this. And he said, if you ever get down to nothing and you think there's no way out, open it. So he went to the mission field. He stayed on the field several years. And when he come back for a furlough several years later, he come back and lo and behold, the people was there to meet him and he run into that guy. And that guy said, well, did you ever use that envelope I gave you? And that guy pulled it out and he said, I've never opened it. He said, you told me if it ever got down to where I couldn't make it to open it and it never got that bad. He said, God always took care of me. That's some character, people. That's some character. You know what you would have done? You'd have opened that thing before you got your clothes unpacked on that boat. <laughs> What's in here? Oh, boy. But see, you can't teach people that kind of character. That comes from being right with God. You know what the Lord did? You know what the Lord will do? You know what the Lord will do if you're not greedy? If you're not greedy and you're selfless and give and submit, you know God will make it up to you in other ways? I'm a believer in that. I'm a firm believer. I'm telling you, a worshiping person. Well, let me say thirdly this morning, I've got to hurry. Uh, a willing person. A willing person. I've already talked about that. A person that's willing to stand. You know what you ought to do? You, you, wanna, you want God to use you? Let me give you some good advice. I've been saved a long time. And I remember when I first got saved, the Jesus freak hippie movement had started. You know, it was going on in the 70s and people was all going crazy and they were, they were bypassing the local church like this. There's an, all that old stiff religion and that old bunch of hypocrites up there. We're just going to sit out on the beach and play our guitars and, and we're going to worship Jesus. That crowd never made it, buddy. They wound up right back out there uh, getting high and right, they never did. You, you listen to me this morning. I'm going to give you some good advice. Align yourself with a good local Bible preaching church. Get in it, be a part of it, and stick in there. God will use you if you'll do that. 
You hear me? I'm a firm believer. I believe God. I, I hear people talk about counseling. We need counseling. Listen, and I'm not against counseling. I'm all for it. The Bible teaches it, and I do a lot of it. I did it this week a lot. But I'm going to tell you something, buddy. We have three big counseling services a week right here, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And if you'll come faithful and be a part of it, your problem will be covered. Your issue will be addressed. Of course, it may not be the answer you're looking for. That's why you go to one of them out there somewhere. Uh, but I, no, most of the time when people want to ask for counseling, most of the time, not always, they're just saying, tell me I'm right. Tell me I'm right. And you may not always get that, but I'm telling you, be a part of a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Get involved in it. Go with the choir. I mean, be a part of it. Get in Sunday school. Get your kids in Sunday school. Be a part of it. You want God to use you, be a willing person. I say, I go to Shining Light Baptist Church. I say, well, I don't like it. Too bad. Devil don't either. Tell them that. Tell them that. The devil don't either. Hallelujah. Amen. Be a, be a willing person. That's right. There's no better. We're no better than nobody else. We ain't. You're no better. I'm no better. But I'm telling you, people, the book says we ought to be separate. We ought to be separate. Come out from among them and be you separate. And uh, you want this plain? You can't hobnob with a whirl and go to, go to the honky tonks on Friday night and the dirty movies on Saturday night and drink and go out with the girls on Friday to Asheville and drink beer and still God use you. you can't do it. You can't do it. God ain't going to use you. God's not going to use people that deliberately uh, are not willing to stand up. Amen? Stand up! Get one of these signs right here. Like this right here. Put it in the window, back window of your car. Let people know I'm taking a stand. Put a bumper sticker on the back of your car. Be a witness. God, a willing person says, hey preacher, I'm willing. Let's get the job done. Let's do this. Let's be willing. Be willing to clean some buses. It'd be not somebody here said, you know what? We used to have people do this. Now they have to do it themselves. Somebody come out. I'm going to clean the buses every Saturday. I just want to do it. I just want to be a willing person. I just want God to use me. I just want to do something for the Lord. Do that. Uh, I want to serve a hot dog at the youth rally. Count me in, preacher. I want to take a hot dog and give it to a little kid that comes on the bus. Our Father in Heaven sees every bit of that. He watches what goes on. If you, if you will forget yourself and what you want to do and say, I'm going to help the buses. I'm going to help with the kids. I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray for the youth rally, or I'm going to give some money, or I'm going to do something for the kids, I'm going to help with the bus kids pizza, or something like that, I'm telling you, God will use you. You know who God will not use? People who continually, all they do is live for their self. You'll be in your own misery, and a mean old hateful old man one day, or a grouchy old woman, if you just live for yourself. Number four, quickly this, this morning. Lord, may the sun stand still for us for a minute. A working person. A working person. You want God to use you? In Ephesians 2.10, it said we're made unto good works. Unto good works. We're not saved by works, but we're creating Christ unto good works. Do your part. In going. In going. Be a witness. If, if you don't visit on Saturday, visit one night of the week. You can do it. You can do it. Go visit all your neighbors. Take one of these little ones right here and go to all your neighbors and just say, we are having a youth rally. You say, preacher, I couldn't do that. Well, you got a problem. You got a problem. You got a problem. Now listen, listen to me. I'm trying to help you. You don't want God to use you? Be a worker. Be a worker. Busy people have no time to be busy bodies. You don't tell you who's involved in all the gossip, who's involved in all the scandals in most churches. People ain't doing nothing. The busiest people in the church stay out of trouble more than everybody else. Always been that way. Do your part in giving. Do your part in giving. Amen. Uh, you can't get the job done. A church can't get the job done with a bunch of freeloaders and hitchhikers. You know what a hitchhiker is? And I've hitchhiked myself, and I will again if I have to, if I break down. But listen, you know what a hitchhiker is basically? He's basically a boy, man, girl, something, who says, Hey, you, guess what? I'm going to let you buy that car and pay payments on it and 
pay the insurance and inspection sticker and put tires in it and gas going up again. I'm gonna, and I'm going to let you worry about it and keep, uh, up, keep on it. And I'm going to give you the privilege of taking me where I want to go. Now, what does that make you want to do the next one you see? Boom. No, you don't do that. I still pick up hitchhiking. If somebody's really in need, I do. I pick them up and I witness to them. But you know, we got a lot of people just hitchhiking to heaven. There's some sitting in here this morning. You let everybody else pay the bills. They buy these lights. They run in them air conditions, buddy, and that ain't cheap. We got six big ones pumping cold air into this building right now. But you don't, you don't, you just want to ride in. You don't even do your part. You're a freeloader. You're a hitchhiker. Listen, they taught me when I first got saved, they said, Danny, 10% of everything you own belongs to God. And I said, he got it. And he's had it ever since by the grace of God. And I'm telling you, don't start this Old Testament junk on me. You don't even know what you're talking about. They tied before the law was ever written, before Moses was ever born, out of their heart. And a New Testament Christian under grace ought to be willing to give way more than a Jew under the law. So if all you're giving is 10%, you're coming out cheap. He said, well, I can't afford it. Now, that's probably why you can't. If God is all-powerful, don't you think he can stretch 90% of your money? He sure can. The children of Israel's shoes didn't wear out for 40 years in the wilderness. He can make your tires last longer. Amen? He can make your teeth not get rotten. If you'll brush them and tithe, <laughs> a working person. How about changing oil on them buses? How about cleaning them? Amen. Second Corinthians six one said, "We then, as workers together." Well, I'm saying say this. I'm through. You know who God will use? A weeping person. A weeping person. Now here's where it gets bad, because I don't see many people anymore that are weeping. Weeping means crying. Weeping don't mean just get a little teary-eyed once in a while. Jesus wept. There's nothing sissy or effeminate about a man crying. Jesus wept. I can tell when I'm getting backslid and cold on God if I go for several months and not cry. Are you telling me there ain't something we need to be crying over? The Apostle Paul in, in Romans chapter 9 and in Romans chapter 12, you know what Paul said? Weep with them that weep. We ought to cry and weep over the sick. When, when we make health requests, that, that little girl down yonder in the hospital in Charlotte, and Miss Dot is back, how, how, how long has it been? Now, I know, I know we're living in a day that's so wicked and so evil, nothing don't affect people. Because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. How long has it been since you shed tears for somebody that needed help? Been a long time, ain't it? Ain't it? You want God to use you? Be a weeping person. You know what helps me to get back where I need to be? When I fast, when I pray, when I get my priorities right, I, I can get up sometime and preach, and I can feel I'm about ready to bust. I'm about ready to break down and cry. If you'd have been here Friday night, if you'd have been here Friday night, we have grown men standing up here in this pulpit talking and tears running down their face. Lord have mercy. That's priceless. Uh, they, they don't do that in the, in the big shot churches. and they don't, I hope they do, but most of them don't. Listen, tears, a weeping person. God will use a weeping person. Those that cry over those that are sick, uh, visit, give them some flowers. Uh, Jeremiah said, uh, oh, that the, oh, that my head were tears and water right running down my face day and night for the daughter of my people. You know what Jeremiah said? That I might weep. Day and night, Jesus said, uh, Jesus wept. Paul said, weep with them that weep. Get yourself to the place where you can cry about the mess other people's in. About your saints. How about your saints? How about our bus kids? You got some bus kids? There's a lot of bus kids that are not here this morning. Bus workers, I'll tell you how to get them. Cry about it. Now, they say there's movie stars in Hollywood can just make themselves cry. I don't know. I can't, I can't. If you see me crying, you can count on it, it's real. 
I can't make. I try to push tears. They won't nothing come out. I, and if there's anything I can't stand, it's somebody stand up in church and try to act like they're crying when they're really not. That's sickening, isn't it? You ever seen? Oh, I just want y'all to pray for us. Oh, just shut up. You're just wanting attention. But you know what? You can't, you can't, I can't make myself cry. And sometimes you can't make yourself not. You start feeling it coming up in here and it's kind of, you say, I'm not, I'm not going to get a hold of myself here. And here it comes. That, don't fight it, man. That's the Lord washing you out. That, that tears are a language God understands. The night I got saved, I don't think I said nothing, but oh God, and I bawled my eyes out for 30 minutes. That's good for you. Uh, God will use a weeping person, a weeping person, a weeping person, a weeping person. Uh, and what about sinners? I talked to a lady the other day who was like a nurse in a, in a doctor's office, and I, I asked her, was she a Christian? She said, yeah, and everything. She said, she said, my life, I feel like my life is, I think she said, like fulfilled if I feel like I'm helping somebody, like helping a sick person feel better and stuff. I said, well, that's good, that's good. And when I left there, all I could think of was this. Brother Danny, what you're doing is going to make people feel better in eternity, not go to hell, not go to hell. If God could use my life, to keep a sinner out of hell. Tell me what a person could do any greater than that. And you know how that happens? Weeping. They're not impressed with our knowledge. They got more than we do a lot of times. They're not impressed with our education. They got more than we do a lot of times. But I'm telling you, it's hard to argue with them tears. You go to somebody's house and you got tears right there and you beg them, I want to see you saved. I want to see you go to church. And it's real, but that's, that's hard to get away from. That's ain't many people. There ain't many people can resist somebody weeping over them. How many times have you heard people stand up in church and give testimony and say, I come in drunk in the middle of the night and I could hear my mom in the floor crying and saying, oh God, save my boy. Listen, God will use a weeping person. He sure will. God used old Joe Parson. He's the preacher that preached revival I got saved in. He got up every morning about 4 or 5 o'clock and prayed for a while. God used him. Or I wouldn't be standing here. God used my pastor, Hall Hollifield, to pray and have that revival that I got saved in. Just like we're planning a youth rally. There's some other crazy Danny out there running around somewhere. Listen, I ain't never been the same since that night. God used Miss Holland, an older lady there in Miss um, uh, Holland and another lady, I can't think of her name right now, who fasted six days and nights before the revival I got saved in. Said she fasted three days. I didn't know this until I'd been saved a couple of months. She fasted three days for all the kids in the community. And when she got done, the Lord said, Go three more. She went six. And I got saved. God will use a weeping person. I don't know how long it's been since you cried, but we might ought to be in here in this altar this morning saying, Lord, give me some tears back. Not fake. Lord, fake's worse than none. Make it real. Wouldn't you like... The old song in your book says, Rescue the perishing. Weep or the erring one. Care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. I'd like for us this morning, everybody that will, say, Lord, use me. And wherever this message goes, around the world, people will say, Lord, use me. Let's stand with our heads bowed. She's coming to the piano this morning. You got loved ones that's not saved? Get to where you can cry over them. Daddy or mom or brother, get to work and shut down. I know I'm the same as you are. Your heart gets hard. You think about people going to hell and you know it's no big deal. Let's get in this altar this morning and say, God, I want to be the person that you can use. A weeping person, a working person, a worshiping person. Amen. A willing person. She's playing. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on this morning. Amen. 
Amen. Come on, mamas, daddies, husbands and wives. This is the best time of year to really get close to God. People are fighting right now. People are praying all over the country for Shining Light Baptist Church. This is the best time of year to really... How about some of you wives and husbands make a fresh start this morning? Get in the church. Get, get in there and serve God. Some of you young people say, you know what? I want to, I want to be a person that God would use. I don't want the devil to use me. My goodness, that'd be awful. I don't want the devil to use me. I want the Lord to use me. Will you come? Will you come this morning? Will you come? Just slip, slide right out of your seat. Get down here this morning. We're going to pray in just a minute. We're going to be going. Get down here this morning and say, Lord, say, Lord, use me. Jesus, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. That's what the old song used to say. Get in the church. Become a part of Shining Light Baptist Church. So I'm going to get in this thing. I'm going to join, preacher. I'm going to be a part of Shining Light Baptist Church. I'm going to work. I'm going to help a bus kid. I'm going to help with a youth rally. Bless the Lord. I want my life to work for God. Amen. Amen. God will bless you, Lord. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God Almighty, that you would do a work in people's hearts. And I believe you have, and I believe you are right now working in the hearts and lines and lives of people. Do what ought to be done in this church this morning, Lord. Touch every single heart. Everyone that's standing here, praying here, sitting here. Lord, God, speak to every single one. Lord, start a fire that'll burn till Jesus comes. May Holy Ghost revival start here this morning. God, do a great and mighty work in days ahead. God, go with us. It's Wednesday night. Tonight, man, that special service tonight, Lord God. Move in here. And then Friday when the choir goes to sing, Lord, help us just to get in. Get in and be a part of it. In Jesus' name. Some still praying now. Some still praying. We're not through. Everybody just hold your seat there. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God.